Welcome to another entry in our Obesity Surgery Brief Interview Collection. In this video, our Associate Editor, Dr. Rodolfo Oviedo, is once again interviewing Dr. Abu Abied. Greetings, everybody. This is Professor Dr. Rodolfo Oviedo, one of the Associate Editors for Obesity Surgery from Springer. On behalf of Professor Scott Shikora, our Editor-in-Chief and the editorial team and social media team of editors, it is my honor and pleasure today to bring you this brief interview for Obesity Surgery, this time with a second time winner of the Top 10 Award from Obesity Surgery, this particular time for the month of August. He has won it for the second time with his team, and I am extremely proud of him and impressed with his work. And I'm talking about Dr. Adam Abu Abed from Tel Aviv University in Tel Aviv, Israel, who, along with his co-authors, has won the award for a manuscript that has been selected by Professor Shikora, and it is entitled Tailored Biliopancreatic Limb Length to 40% of Total Small Bowel Length in One Anastomosis Gastric Bypass, Table 40 protocol of a prospective randomized control trial. Dr. Abu Abate, congratulations once again. What a phenomenal protocol that you have written with your co-authors. Congratulations again. Would you please uh, tell me a little bit about the idea, how this came about, how you thought about it with your co-authors? What are you trying to find out and what particular problem within metabolic and bariatric surgery are you trying to solve for all of us? Thank you, Professor Oviedo, for your kind words. It is again a big honor and privilege for me to be here. I would like also to express my gratitude to Professor Shikora for choosing our article to be one of the top 10 papers. One anastomosis gastric bypass, OAGB, is the most commonly performed procedure in Israel. In fact, it comprises more than 70% of all metabolic and bariatric procedures in Israel, and we are the only country in the world where OAGB is so popular. The idea for this study came from the fact that there is no defined uniform length of the biliopancreatic limb in OAGB. Surgeons usually perform 150, 180, 200, 250, and they create this based on the BMI or the presence of diabetes, but there is no clear uh, definition how much to bypass. We follow many patients after OAGB, and we see that there are still patients with insufficient weight loss or weight regain after the procedure during the long-term follow-up. And on the other hand, we also see patients with nutritional problems after OAGB. So this is what we are actually trying to solve by performing a more tailored approach according to the total bowel length, we think that we may achieve good to better weight loss outcomes and better metabolic outcomes, and we can ensure a long enough common channel to reduce the nutritional risks. Thank you, Dr. Abu Abate. And go over, going over your protocol, I understand that you are going to conduct it across three centers. And so it's a multi-centered trial involving 200 participants who undergo OAGB or one anastomosis gastric bypass. They will be 18 years or older and they will be randomized into two arms or two groups. One group will undergo a tailored uh, biliopancreatic length uh, based on the 40% measurement that you anticipate of the total small bowel length, while the control group will undergo the typical one anastomosis gastric bypass in whom uh, patients will, in which patients will undergo a, uh, a BP limb length of 180 centimeters. So uh, why did you decide to do this based on 40% of the total small bowel length versus the typical 180 centimeters that you tend to see in most OAGBs? That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, we know that there is a significant variation in small bowel length between patients. It can range from 3 to even 9 meters. So using a fixed length of 180 centimeters may represent a very different proportion of the bowel. And due to that, patients may have different clinical outcomes. So we chose 40%. By choosing that, our goal was to provide a more individualized approach. We selected 40% because it is large enough to achieve effective hypoabsorption and has a good metabolic impact, but is, it is not so long as to create excessive nutritional risks. Most OAGB surgeons, they recommend to ensure at least a 250 to 300 centimeter common channel. And when you bypass 40%, this is almost always possible. 
So by comparing the tailored approach of 40% to a fixed limb of 180 centimeter, we hope that we will understand if a tailored approach has any importance in the clinical terms and can possibly change our practice in OEGB in the future. Now, an interesting question for you. What possible shortcomings or weaknesses or limitations do you foresee that you are going to have to face during the conduction of this multicenter randomized control trial and protocol? And if you encounter them, how are you going to mitigate such differences or weaknesses or limitations? Thank you for this great question. Uh, I think like any randomized control trial, this study may face uh, a lot of challenges. In my view, the main challenge, the main limitation is the uh, total small bowel length measurement variation between surgeons. Uh, we know that surgeons have different style, different techniques of bowel measurement, and this may cause variations in the actual bowel length. Uh, and this potentially can result in different outcomes. However, I do believe that this is balanced by the design of the tailored group since using a proportional bypass helps us understand what are the outcomes in a tailored approach. Uh, another challenge, of course, which is always right after metabolic and bariatric surgery is the maintenance of long-term follow-up and the patient adherence to the recommendations they get after surgery. Uh, we did design a structured follow-up program at each center with strong patient support, and we hope that this can be mitigated by that. From investigator to investigator and from a fan of your work, uh, let me ask you this question. Do you have any practical piece of advice? And I asked you this question during the last interview, but this time, do you have any practical piece of advice for our readers from obesity surgery, for our medical students or researchers or residents, registrars, interns, fellows who are becoming young investigators and they want to follow in your footsteps? Any piece of advice for them not to give up and to continue to do, a, to do high quality research for all of us? Thank you again for a great question. Um, in my opinion, most importantly, clinical and basic research should start very early in your medical career. I always tell that to my medical students. Uh, this helps them learning the structure of their academic career. It helps them shape their skills and helps them also progress very early. Uh, another important point and recommendation is to find a mentor. In my view, mentorship is essential for success, especially uh, in the early stages. Uh, I would also say to my students and to my uh, residents to work in teams and to build collaborations very early. Uh, no one can do research alone. Uh, it's much better and much more productive to do it uh, in groups and it's much more fun as well. Well, dear Dr. Abu Abed, it has been my honor, my privilege to host you today at this short interview. Congratulations again to you and to your team on being authors uh, who have won the top 10 paper award again from obesity surgery. On behalf of Professor Dr. Scott Shikora, on behalf of uh, Dina, our editorial manager for obesity surgery, and Emma, as well as Dr. Ido Arts and Dr. Carolina Batista, and yours truly, congratulations. We are so proud of you, so impressed. Thank you once again, Professor Oviedo. It has been a true privilege to take part in this interview and I sincerely appreciate you and Professor Shikora and all the obesity surgery team for giving us the opportunity to share our work and participate here today. We uh, look forward to having more high quality submissions from different authors at Obesity Surgery. I encourage all our readers to follow us on social media, uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. You never know in the future, I may be interviewing one of you watching. I hope so, and I hope to learn from you. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time and congratulations again. Thank you for watching. You can read the full content of this very interesting article at the following link. Visit our journal's website to read this article and more at link.springer.com forward slash journal forward slash 11695. See you next time.